Rhea here back from the at from the Pinmar Golf Tournament, actually. It is the final Pinmar Golf Tournament after 31 years. And I am joined by Nick, who has been instrumental in this golf tournament for how many years now? Uh, this is my 28th. So I've done them all except the first three. Amazing. And who held your position in the first three? Uh, there wasn't one. That was actually the problem. Uh, I was invited to be Master of Ceremonies because then at the prize giving, uh, Peter Allen, our founder, was on the stage with a microphone. He was calling up the winners, Chris Morehouse, the photographer, neither of them still with us, unfortunately. Chris was taking the photographs while Peter was chatting, but they needed somebody to call the next team up to keep it moving, and they didn't have anybody. So by the time it got to, I, I missed the first three, so by the time it got to the fourth one, Donal, the wonderful chef, uh, again, I saw a Facebook page the other day saying it was 15 years since Don died, and I can't believe it. Um, another wonderful character. And Don said to Peter, ah, you need Nick, because he'd seen me do something else at the founding dinner I helped at for Jovis Navagans, one of the charities. And Don said to Peter, ah, get Nick to do it. So right. they invited me to be Master of Ceremonies. So I did that for five years, mm -hmm. and then they gave me a job. Nice. So the golf tour, I did the golf tour and got me my job with Pinmar, and then I worked for Pinmar for 22 years. So wow. this thing has is absolutely life-changing for me. It's been a huge part of my life and completely changed it. Well, how much work is involved in putting something like this together? It's it's a huge team of people. Uh, there's a whole lot of you've seen all the people sitting at reception. Uh, there's probably 20 marshals on the course. There are all the volunteers on the bars within the company. Uh, we've got a whole team of people who all have day jobs within very busy day jobs within the business. But everybody gets the golf. It everybody loves it uh, and, and enjoys doing it and puts in a lot of extra time. Um, and then Joe Lane is our sort of the sort of professional outside or event organizer who does a lot of it, bless her. So that takes a fair bit of the load off, but it's still uh, a huge amount of work in house. Uh, and as I say, there are a load of volunteers um, doing all sorts of things. I mean, say we've got the Super Yacht Charity team selling raffle tickets right. all day today and tomorrow. They'll be doing the same on Saturday night. Um, yeah, big, big team of people um, who, who I mean, you, we've, we've always started, you know, we have a debrief after after each one and, and are already planning the next one. That, now, obviously, we don't have to do that uh, in quite the same way this time. But also, looking around, you've seen all some of the amazing outfits they wear, the effort that's gone into the costumes, that kind of thing. And also, I must say, special mention for uh, Ed Thomas and the, I told, I told you as we came in this morning about the... Um, the treat on the uh, the putting green. Yes, this yes. Wonderful little trick uh, that he's got there, literally connecting it. Uh, the 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 terrace is connected to the putting green via a drain pipe yeah. in order to encourage people to get off the sofa, put down their glass of rosé for a minute, and and buy some balls for the charity and take part in the uh, in the putting competition. So that's a great innovation, brilliant idea. So I love the fact that all the time we're here beavering away, there are loads of other people coming up thinking about the event as we are, months in advance, and coming up with new ideas and new outfits and things we know nothing about until they arrive. So that's, that. Would, I love the fact that people, lots of other people are putting hidden efforts, you know, efforts that are hidden from us until the time right. comes, as, as it were. Well, and how many golfers do you have this year? Uh, 320, I think, at the last count. So 80, 80 teams of four. Uh, so that's spread over the four shotgun starts, um, which is what we've kept it to for the last few years. We've got when we did our 25th event, it was a special anniversary. Loads of people came. We had, I think, from memory, 424 golfers, whatever, how many teams that is divided by. It was well, it's 100, it's 106, isn't it? So yes, 106 teams uh, over three days, and there were 950 for the dinner, and it very nearly killed us. Uh, and we we decided just to calm it down a little bit and scale it back. So for the last five years, we've been at about this number four evenly balanced shotgun starts or as evenly as we can um and it just fits so like, because it's 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 difficult we've a very if i can put it politely a mixed ability group of uh, golfers uh, some some wonderful golfers some begin relative beginners um so it takes a while to get them all around so we, we we need to keep it need to keep it moving well and realistically though it's not necessarily about the golf it's more about the sense of community it's about coming together it's about helping out charity um and it's about the end of the season as well isn't it uh, very much so yep all of those things and also i mean just just the, the lifelong friendships the people that you know 
so many people who are here playing together today will have first met through this event right. and so on. You know, there are couples who've fallen in love and got married uh, through this event and so on. Um, people who've had uh, friendships and also business relationships. It's it's a wonderful networking event. It's a much more uh, yes, it's not quite as big as the Monaco show, but it's a, I'm sorry, more fun. <laughs> and, and it's, uh, you know, because but but there's still loads of great networking and so on. I don't know that anybody ever talks business. Yes, you might swap a card and so on. Nobody necessarily talks that much business. But at the same time, but if you meet at the golf, you know, ring them up next week and say, "Hi, Freddie, we met at the the Pinmar. Off you go. It's not rocket science. It's just simple yeah. networking but it's a great opportunity but to do it in you know you look around especially since we've been so lucky with the weather beautiful surroundings and plenty more parties to come we've got the friday night party the saturday brunch and a big black tie dinner on saturday night with some spectacular entertainment um which is going to be great fun so yeah it's 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 it's, it's a lot of uh, a lot of enjoyment for a lot of people well and you've got people that have come from the states from dubai i mean from all over the terrific. world much. Yeah, yeah very much so yeah terrific terrific turnout from the states um several very good friends of finmar and of the event people uh, some of whom i haven't seen for a while so just personally great treat to see so many of them here yes all over europe um shipyards plenty from germany from holland from france from italy and so on so yeah and 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 a lot from the main you know, from from the peninsula as well as right. uh, as well as here and 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 the yachties of course i mean that's just the companies and sponsors i know where they're based some of the yachties i couldn't tell you offhand how far some of them have come they may have come uh, from, from all over if, yeah if, uh, uh, but uh, yeah it's uh, yeah we're always very flattered by the by the turnout it's it's uh, well, I mean, the, the crowd seems really excited. They seem yeah. really happy. There's smiles everywhere. Everyone's having a really, really good time. Um, what's next for you? Are you going to be continuing to, to work with whatever the next event is? Or um, I, I, you are involved greatly with Yachting Gives Back. Uh, is that yep. going to be your focus from now on? Um, it's, it looks like it, yes. I mean, it has taken on a little bit of a life of its own. Um, it started out as a simple food raising campaign um, when I first had the, I had the idea last Christmas. Um, just thinking that surrounded by uh, many hundreds of millions of dollars worth of soup yacht that perhaps we could raise some food from them for a, for some uh, a soup kitchen and a food bank and homeless people and so on. Um, and so we started it off at Easter. Um, we collected about 650 kilos of food in the first round, which was lovely. Um, and then, but then people said, oh yeah, but you know, what else can you take? Can, oh, we've got some old uniform. Can you use that? Can you use this? And so we very quickly learned to say, actually say yes to everything and then work out what to do with it. And so far we've managed to find a home for almost everything. Um, bedding is a particular thing at the moment because <clears throat> Association Tardor, which is a, a Commodore Social, a soup kitchen, we would call it, um, as we supply them with as much food as we can collect, but they have also recently acquired premises in Parma, which they're going to convert into a homeless shelter with about 45 beds. Um, so we're even collecting beds, um, beds, mattresses, um, bedding, and it's this. Fortunately, the timing has been perfect because it's refit time of year. So loads of the yachts are changing things over. Um, I've spoken to in the last couple of weeks. I contacted all of the the interior refit companies, the linen suppliers and so on. Um, with with one exception, funnily enough, and I've just caught up with him now, um, Bob the Bed, who wasn't around. And I thought, well, don't worry, I'll see him at the golf. And then I see from our own, because I've been up here all week doing the golf, my team had a fantastic collection from them. They made a huge donation to us earlier this week that I didn't even know about yeah, so until I saw it on our own Facebook page. Yeah. I didn't even know. <laughs> so I, I, I caught up with Bob this morning and, and thanked him. So fantastic donation from them. But everybody else has been very positive. Um, and, and, and willing to help. And the yachts, again, I mean, and, and I think that the timing is right, obviously. You know, everybody's trying to be a bit more thoughtful and conscious of recycling, getting rid of single use plastic, uh, and so on. So I think, you know, the yachting industry, like anything else, can be wasteful. Um, and, and, and by definition, it's, we know that it's a, you know, it's a high end luxury industry. Um, so the things that they have on board that they might discard because they're no longer perfect are still super yacht quality products, which yes. may well do very nicely. You know, the fact that a pillow, uh, and, and I love the fact that a homeless person, well, they love the fact that there are homeless people, but the fact that if there are homeless people, um, that they might be able to sleep on the finest 
hello anybody's ever made um, and why not um, so the fact that so much of this stuff is good quality is lovely and it will and also because it will last so it, it'll be harder wearing hopefully and, and, and will and will last a bit longer in the in the uh, homeless hostel so that's been very positive um, and also, and then not just bedding, but just other general bits and pieces that uh, people say, oh, can you use that, can you use that? The answer is yes, we probably can, because Mallorca sends a fan, Mallorca Without Hunger, which is more of a food bank, a, a community supermarket, um, which we also help with food. They have a conventional charity shop alongside um, where they will sell anything that we, we give them, uh, clothing, um, uh, galley equipment that's not needed any decent you know, in, um, sort of commercial size galley equipment of course can go to Tardor but so much stuff that we've um, we've given to um, your percent of fam that they can sell in the shop and then the money that the shop raises uh, pays the rent on the supermarket on the on the food bank um, and buys more food right um, so everything everything we've used so far I mean, literally just a second before we were talking uh, i saw it saying what you know can we can we use a 55 kilowatt generator uh, i thought well of course you can. say yes of course again <laughs> we'll, we'll find a home for it somebody will take That's it so, right. so the answer is yes we'll 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 shift it well and you can and always it, and, say, and sell that we can and use that to sell it directly food i, mean, I will happily trade that for yeah you know a few boxes of pasta and rice and somebody will be enough yeah not give it away but just make to, uh, anything like that if i can convert it into food then I'm then I'm happy. Yeah. Um, and also, life has become a lot easier. Uh, literally, as of yesterday, uh, when we started off, we had fantastic. Well, we still have fantastic support from Sir Pinmar Supply and from Delicioso. But particularly as far as Pinmar was concerned, as well as supplying the boxes that we distribute and the collection point with the Pinmar Supply shop, um, they also gave storage space in the uh, in the warehouse out at Sonoms past the airport, which was fantastically helpful with shelving there. It gave us a great place just to store stuff sort it out decide what goes where but as of this week i now have a shipping container inside stp which has been donated wow. by stp to us which is just fantastic and so it's right outside the dock bar um which is makes life a so much easier for the boats much easier for us much less wasteful in fuel and time um and is, is a fantastic advantage um for us so that's going to make life much easier all around so we're very grateful to stp for that so that's been a that's been a big boost this week so well, that's the team are very happy yeah. that's amazing because you know right now we're heading into winter time in mallorca and um of course you know christmas is around the corner and we all know that you know come christmas time families are struggling and, and it, it just makes for an even worse feeling throughout the season if they aren't able to provide for their families etc yeah. um so the fact that you guys are out there you are gathering mm. these things and providing for these families is, is you know absolute star quality to sure. you well the christmas campaign as i say when we started off we, we did the easter campaign and lots of people said oh what about doing an end of season one which has turned out to be fantastic and from the beginning we always thought we'll do a christmas campaign just because we've all got too much stuff at christmas and can yeah. help and we can all spare a bit of something extra so what what i think we've, we've thought amongst the team is that because we've got so busy now with the bedding and now is the right time to get the yachts as they come in as they're starting to do refits now is the time they're getting rid of stuff and they need the space um so as soon as they decide something's got to go it helps if we concentrate on that take the stuff away as fast as we can so we try to respond very quickly to requests but it does mean that the food is, uh, we've still done plenty of food, like the fantastic Palladium donation the other day, 25 bags filled two cars, was wonderful. But what I haven't done this autumn, uh, for the Easter campaign, I approached a lot of the local industry service companies, all the shore-based companies, uh, who were wonderful and very supportive, um, but I haven't um, pestered them yet in this one because it just seemed it was a perfect time just to collect stuff from the yachts. But I was thinking that by Christmas, the uh, the refit season you know, will still be in full flow. But, well, some of the boats will have done a quick stop and gone to the Caribbean. Yeah. And people doing longer term refits, they'll have got rid of already the stuff they want to get rid of. They will be building and installing the new things or whatever. So uh, then I thought Christmas is probably the good time when we'll concentrate on food and the shore-based companies. And then I'll be knocking on the doors of all our friends and sponsors from here and so on who were very generous at Easter and will try and do a, that again and, and get a get a good uh, a good collection together for Christmas. Well, and we'd love to help share the, the that, word out there and let everybody know where, when, what, uh, how to that, donate. That would be wonderful. Yeah. And also, if people would be so kind as to follow, we'd love it. Please, if you follow 
follow uh, Yachting Gives Back on Facebook. That would be fantastic. I speak as a complete dinosaur who six months ago didn't know one end of Facebook from Twitter, and I'm now a converted dinosaur, thanks to my wonderful Facebook wizard, Louise. Um, I mentioned the Palladium donation. That reached, I don't know how, 25,000 people, which yeah. is just mind-boggling. So uh, we also have uh, yachtinggivesback.com, the website, uh, which just gives a general introduction to, a very good introduction to everything we do, explains about the charities we help, and also the homepage on the, uh, the website very cleverly feeds, out in, feeds down into the Facebook feed, so it's all there as well. And yes, if anybody wants to get in touch, nick at yachtinggivesback.com is the email address, and uh, we will respond to anything well, uh, as quickly as we can. Well, we will post this YouTube video, and um, we will include the link below You're that wonderful. in order to get in touch Thank with you. you. That's now, there marvelous. are um, some tickets still left for the gala, from what I understand. Uh, I'm sure there are, um, but that would be for Eva, uh, there, for Emma and, and the team. Uh, they're here at reception at the uh, behind me uh, at uh, Songwal. Um, or, or again, you can ring the, the Vimar office or Emma at gygroup.com. Well, I've also uh, listed, yes, I've, I've put you, the you've website up, up, so yeah, Fantastic. I've got the information up there. That's all covered. Want. Yes, yeah. general, yes, pinmargolf.es has all the information. Yeah. Um, and also lots of raffle tickets. Yes, please, please buy lots of raffle tickets from tickets from the Super Yacht Charities team. Uh, they're selling tickets today and tomorrow on the golf course, and they'll be busy on Saturday night as well, as will the Pinmar volunteers, because by uh, once the show starts, I think the Super Yacht Charities team will sit down and enjoy their dinner, and the Pinmar team will take over. So there will be raffle tickets uh, on sale right up to uh, the, the last minute, uh, or halfway through dinner on Saturday night before we make the draw. And also, if you can afford to do a little bit more than that, please bid generously. There will be a silent auction of uh, sporting memorabilia and other things done by uh, Impulse Decisions and James Marsden, uh, which always raises a fantastic sum. And then there are a few, for those with slightly deeper pockets still, there will be about five very nice prizes in the live auction. Um, and that is also a big earner. So please support us. And what we'd love to do from the golf point of view, last year we broke uh, the 30-year combined total of a million, we went through a million euros. Uh, our personal best was, I think we've just done over 100,000 in the past. We'd love to go out with a bang and, and break the six-figure barrier again. So please do what you can. And all I can say to the golfers is, after 31 years, for God's sake, somebody win the damn car. <laughs> I think there's a car up for grabs. There's a Mercedes, a Mercedes right there, right outside the window. For par, yeah. And the years and years that we've, we and or us and or our sponsors have paid for the because you insure against it, yeah. so you pay the premium. The premiums we've paid over the years, we could have bought four Ferraris quite comfortably. So, so please, somebody get a hole in one and let's go out with an even bigger celebration. That would be very cool. Those that are planning to plan golf tournaments in the future. Maybe just consider buying the car and having self, it sit it's, there. You, it's, you, you, you need to look at self-insuring as yeah. a it's, it's a risk. That's what insurance is for. But uh, but yeah, for those brave enough, self-insure and uh, treat yourself to a car. Yeah. You might save some money and give more to charity. Yeah. Right. Do you know what? You're really busy. You're the one running around. I'm actually lucky to get him. We got here at 7 o'clock this morning, and uh, he has been going nonstop, Nick. So thank you very much for giving us your time, talking about Yachting Gives Back, and, of course, this amazing finale for uh, the Pinmar yeah. Golf Tournament 2019. We look forward to what's going to be coming up next year and i'm sure you're going to be letting us know all about it so uh, that's out of my hands that, that that is that is up to a higher power <laughs> <laughs> right wonderful. thank you thank you Rick. and thank uh we'll have you on here again soon uh but this time in regards to yachting gives back thank you so much this has been real live for yachting international radio thank you